Now this Christ mine within you, within me, within every man, has twelve disciples, has twelve faculties, or qualities, or attributes, or aspects. And each one of these twelve functions of the Christ mind in you, in me, in every man, must be disciplined or discipled to serve our good purpose, to serve our God purpose. If the mind refuses or neglects to discipline its twelve faculties, these twelve faculties will disserve him, will betray him, this is where we come to the story of Judas. Here is one faculty of the mind that was not quickly enough disciplined. Here is a faculty of the mind which was not quickly enough trained to serve the master. Because, ladies and gentlemen, there are some things in life, there are some things in the cosmic order that cannot be skipped. The twelve disciples of the mastermind, one missed and almost messed up the whole plan of salvation. Now, this is not just a theological history. This is present. This is a factor within your being that you had better think seriously about right now. If you do not discipline yourself spiritually, mentally, physically, totally, if you do not discipline the twelve attributes of your being, those who are undisciplined will betray you, will deserve you, and mess up your whole plan of salvation. A bit of rank heresy at the moment, but it will demonstrate something very important. Certain of the Eastern mystics say that a man reincarnates on this earth again and again until he learns what he has to learn. I'm not going to get into the pros and cons of reincarnation as a point that I want to make. Be that as it is, I is not, or as it may or may not be. I'll tell you this, there are certain spiritual realities that you are going to have to learn and discipline yourself to follow, and I'll tell you one thing, you will catch hell until you learn, because every time we have a challenge, every time we have a problem, it is an indication to us that there is something right here that I need to know. There's something right here that I need to learn. I'll say this also, and in some quarters it may sound like heresy. I'll tell you this also, you know, you cannot die out of life. Even if you hang yourself, even if you commit suicide. When you leave this body, that's not all, that's not the end of it. I've got news for you, when you came into your present body, that wasn't the beginning of life. <laughs> This body is neither the beginning nor the ending of you. I'm sure of this. I'm not going to argue about reincarnation. I even introduce it very much at this point. But I'll tell you this. When you go, you take one thing with you, and I'm certain of that. Your consciousness. I am certain of that. Leaving the body isn't a big thing with me at all because I'm not bound by it. I've passed that stage anyway. I'm not bound to it anyway. And so when I do decide to leave it, finally, it will frankly be nothing new to me. I get into so many subjects at one time. I remember once sitting right here in visualization with you. Maybe it was in 1973, I believe it was. And we were doing a visualization treatment. And I said, I see myself through the eyes of God. It was somewhere in the middle of that visualization. And then and there, out through my physical eyes, my consciousness projected, and I saw my body sitting in the chair, still giving the visualization. There are thousands of people here. And the intellect, of course, said to me very quickly, you'd better get back in there. This is not the time to do this. 
So being conscious of the fact that I am not this body, even though this body is mine, it's not me. Having that consciousness and various other experiences that I won't even go into, Paul went into a part of his, he said, I know a man who was caught up into the third heaven. It's interesting, Christians are afraid of these little things, but yet they're all over the Bible, all in the Bible. <laughs> Jesus even spoke with Elijah and some of the other prophets that had gone, and it's spooky, really. Maybe this is why some of the Orthodox Christians don't deal with some of these things. But anyway, I've gotten into a million subjects here all at one time. But I do want to point out to you, you are consciousness. You are awareness. You are an individualization of the I am God. Each man is an individualization of infinite God. And you as individual consciousness are going to have to learn who you are. Hopefully, all of us who have been studying in these various series over the past few weeks, hopefully we have all built our consciousness to a higher level. I feel that I have. I can feel the difference. And the more you learn about the truth of you, about the truth of God in you, about the truth of good in you, then the less you will have to suffer. Now, God doesn't put suffering on us, no, not even to try us. As I said in a previous session, there's really nothing hard about this. If there be any hardness, it's really in the individual that sometimes the ears are so stopped up with the wax of world opinion <laughs> and religious and theological gobbledygook. And you see, the more we hear the truth and study the truth and meditate upon the truth, the more it melts the wax of world opinion and religious gobbledygook out of our ears. So what we're really doing in these sessions, we're cleaning our ears. We're cleaning our inner ears so that we can hear God, so that we can hear good, so that we can hear truth, so that we can hear the Christ of our being. You have a job to do. I have a job to do. I'm thinking of a hymn, and I believe John Wesley is the author. A charge to keep I have, a God to glorify, a never dying soul to save and fit it for the sky. Now, there's even an, a valid esoteric interpretation to that. I have a job to do. Now, most of the evangelists are caught up on preaching the gospel to the whole physical earth. Uh, here we understand that we are, first of all, preaching the gospel to our earth, to our world of mind, to our world of consciousness. But we do have a charge to keep. We have a job to do in our own consciousness. Yes, and we do have a never-dying soul. And the never-dying soul, again, is the individualization of infinite God, which you are. And to fit it for the sky, to fit it for its high estate, to fit it for its high spiritual estate. Yes, every person has a high spiritual estate. I have a high spiritual estate. And he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. What's the secret? And I heard one minister say, and it's true in a way, he said, there are no secrets. No, there are no secrets, not really. But what you don't know is a secret to you until you know it. See, most people are a secret to themselves. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. That's a secret to most people. Oh, me? Yes, you. And again, I told you about the young man that I'm going to do a special sermon on. He gave me a good sermon. Who said to me, Reverend Ike, you know, those rich people sure do have a secret. And I sure wish I knew it. And I said to him, yes, son, we do have a secret. We do know a secret. And you are that secret. So let me hear every one of you say, I am the secret. I am the secret. And you see, the master Jesus realized this, and it was not a secret to him. This is why he could say, I am the truth. <laughs> you see, and after all that catching hell and bumping your head and going through hell trying to get to heaven, when you finally discover the truth, you will discover I am the truth. When you finally discover the way after you've been through the Baptist, the Methodist, the Holy Rollers, the Metamagicians, and the Evangelists, and the Catholics, and the Protestants, 
After you've been through all of that, when you finally do discover the way, your ultimate discovery will be, I am the way. I am the root and the offspring. I am the first and the last, the beginning and the end. I am the Lord, which was and is to come. <laughs>